MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limit. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin-starred chef Dylan McGrath. It'll be really interesting to see what sort of talent is out there. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. To be able to sort of take and nurture these home amateur cooks, but turn them into chefs. Now that is what I'm really excited to do. From over a thousand applicants, the top 50 have been chosen to battle it out to get one of the coveted 16 aprons. And a chance to win 25,000 euro if they become Ireland's first ever MasterChef champion. Nick, we have no idea what's gonna walk through that door. It's the second day of the MasterChef auditions. Hopeful amateur chefs and their friends and families have travelled to Dublin to follow their dream of becoming the first ever MasterChef in Ireland. In the first round, most were sent home. Certainly not at the MasterChef level. For that reason, it's a no for me. OK. It's a no. OK. But thank you anyway. But the seven most talented amateur chefs won themselves an apron. You think he's happy? If both judges give a resounding yes, a MasterChef apron and a place in the next round is awarded. No's from each of the judges means they must leave the competition, but a yes and a no means they will return tomorrow for a cook-off. We're halfway through the auditions. We've given away seven aprons. We've got nine places left. I really hope we haven't seen the best of what's out there. Otherwise, you're going to have to start cooking, aren't you, mate? Now, with only nine aprons available and just 55 minutes to impress, competition will be fierce. First up to cook for Nick and Dylan is 44-year-old housewife Jackie, originally from the Netherlands. I think I can win this competition. I'm going to put all my love and care in my dishes and... Uh do whatever I can to make the best dishes possible. What are you going to be cooking for us today? I'm cooking Balinese uh, chicken uh, in a spinach and coconut sauce, uh, flavour some rice and a serum dang. OK, well, you have 45 minutes to cook your dish, then you have an additional 10 minutes to plate up and clean down your station, so enjoy your cooking. Thanks. I get to eat her food every day, so I know how good it is. I think she's quietly confident, and hopefully she'll cook to her best ability. Next up is 59-year-old IT consultant Stuart, who's been cooking since he was a child. What are you going to cook for us today, Stuart? I'm doing a uh, spatchcock poussin on bulgar wheat. Good luck. He's been cooking ever since I can remember, anyway. You'd nearly need to reinforce the floor, the amount of books he has. Books on the floor and books and boxes and all. Where do you get your ideas from? I have 2,000 good books. So you say you've got good instinct? I guess so. OK. Jackie, you have 10 minutes left. You are now out of time. Will you please present your dish? Jackie has cooked Balinese chicken with spinach, coconut sauce, pilau rice and desiccated coconut and peanut serendang. I like it. I think that the balance of the dish is great. I think it's a winner. I think you've shown some real Thank talent you. today. Yeah. So it's a yes for me. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thanks. Do you think the chicken is slightly overcooked? Right. But saying that, mm. I do like the dish. And I would like to see you again, so it's a yes from me. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. So very well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done, Jackie. Oh. Wow. 
Jackie, welcome to the club. Wow, thank you. Thank so you what, we, we deserve that. Thank you very much. So let's hope we can see more dishes of this caliber. Yeah, I do my best. I okay. do my very best. <laughs> Good job. Wow, I can't believe it. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. Nick, thank, thank you. you. Welcome, Thanks. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. Wow. Well done. Oh. Is he, Tammy? Well, he's, he's got 2,000 cookbooks. In his house? Let's see if we can cook. Stuart, you have 10 minutes left. Do you actually need the 10 minutes? I need about five. Five, perfect. Stuart has cooked a grilled spatchcock poussin on lemon bulgur wheat with tomato, honey, and saffron dressing, and pita bread chips. Personally, I don't like it. For the simple reason of the honey and the vinegar has mixed together, and that's all I'm tasting, so for me, it's a no. I just don't think the dish ultimately is strong enough get you through to the next part of the competition. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Thanks Stuart. Stuart. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. It's a shame. I thought the dish was good enough. So I'm disappointed. 30-year-old Russian national Elena, who lives in Dublin and works as an IT engineer at Google, has decided to make an impression by cooking a dish from her homeland. I feel very strong about what I'm going to cook. It's mostly a reflection of a simple Russian cooking, family cooking, feel-good cooking. Hi, Elena. How are you? Happy to be here. And what do you do? I'm a geek. I work in Google. You say geek? Geek, yeah. And is this one of your um, signature dishes? Today I'm cooking pelmeni. Pelmeni. Yes. It's uh, Russian, Russian dumplings with spicy meat in them. OK, well, good luck. Thank you very much. Elena has her dumplings boiling and starts on her sauce. What's that you're making? It's a sauce made with just blended berries, onion, and a bit of black pepper. You feel that that'll go together, do you? Yes. Elena has served Siberian pork and beef pelmeni with sour cream and an onion and strawberry sauce. my palate, it was odd, because I've got the pork dumpling, the sour cream, and then the strawberry. For me, it's a no. Mm -hmm. The dumplings are fine. I don't think the sauce goes with the dumplings. I don't think it's necessary for me to taste it either. Um, I know what strawberry and onion taste like individually, so I'm going to pass. I think that you've um, put in a good effort, and I think that you've represented your idea of cuisine very well, but unfortunately, it's a no. Okay. Okay, but thank you for coming in. Thank you for trying, and uh, good luck. I actually found that very hard to eat. You know that? <laughs> you've done well. But I did it. I did it for the team. Yeah. I still think it was a fine dish. For me, those flavors are not weird at all. It's actually one of my favorite sauces. <laughs> and for others, the MasterChef journey is ending far too soon. Gwen from Mayo, who cooked hazelnut crusted halibut with creamed leeks and herb sauce. And the cooking of the fish, are you happy? Uh, yeah. It's quite raw. I'm gonna eat this anyway, because I like sushi. Okay, thank you. The fish is underdone. It's a big error. I don't feel this is at the standard that we're looking for, Gwen, to be completely fair. Yeah. So it's a no for me. OK. Would have loved to have gotten an apron. Really would have, but it's the way it goes. Dermot from Dublin made a classic beef tart de Rossellini. What I'm tasting is overcooked foie gras. Yeah. The cheese completely kills the dish. 
I can't give this a yes. Ah, would have meant everything. A whole new opportunity. Would have been, would have been good. Will unemployed bricklayer David Sheridan, selected through the John Murray radio show, grab the judge's attention with his avocado spring rolls on polenta with a homemade chili jam? Ideally, all these ingredients should work together. The avocado, the tomato, the chili. It lacks the experience to put it through. So for that reason, I can't give you an apron. OK. With only one yes so far today, 28-year-old trainee solicitor Steve from Kildare has a lot to prove. What are you going to cook for us today? I'm going to cook a breast of pheasant and a rich armagnac sauce. Well, I was down in Kerry in early January. Shot the pheasant there, had it in the freezer ever since. So uh, hopefully he'll be up to scratch. Hey, gents, what's cooking? Uh, it's got the breast of pheasant on. Um, it was fried for a few minutes on either side. It should work out pretty good. Have you got some vegetable with it today? or No. You haven't, um, you haven't chose to do any vegetable or potato with the bird? No, I haven't. Okay. I don't think it needs anything else. OK, Steve, time is up. Finish your dish. Okay. Steve has cooked a breast of pheasant with a rillette of pheasant leg meat and an Armagnac sauce. How old is your pheasant? It was shot in the second week in January. There's absolutely no flavour. OK. So for me, it's a no. OK. Thank you. I'm going to eat a small bit of this because January, you said, yeah? Yep. Okay. Yeah, Nick's right. To be completely fair, um, the dish needs other components. It's not really a dish. You've just cooked a bird um, yep. and taken 55 minutes to do it. So for me, it's a definite no. I thought it was a good quality bird. I think what really let me down was I focused too much on the bird and I should have done more on sort of other components in the dish. I can't believe he came in and did that. After a disappointing run of lacklustre dishes, next up is 28-year-old Tipperary-born occupational therapist Bree Jean Carey. Very competitive. I'm in this to win it. I always want to win. I think that is very important. <laughs> Before Bree Jean's cooking really gets going, she suffers a setback. Can she make up for precious lost minutes? Oh, I'm hoping just to see a really big smile and that she's gotten through. And if she hasn't, that she's not too upset by it because she's still a brilliant cook anyway. There's no excuses. If you want to do it, you can do it. You know, I'm going to be in the last week. That's just it. I know I can do it and I will do it and I'll prove it to myself. OK, Brigitte, time is up. Breedine has cooked turnidos of organic salmon, potato rosti with horseradish cream and beetroot puree. Start. Salmon is roasted beautifully. You haven't overcooked it. It's pink in the middle. Good. The potato rosti adds a crunchy dimension to the dish. It's excellent. Thank you. I take my time, sorry. That's fine. Good for your digestion. I absolutely love that. Great. <laughs> I think that's gorgeous. Lovely flavour. It's fresh, it's light, it's a hit. Brilliant. For me, it's a yes. Great. Put this on you. Thank you very much. Well deserved. <laughs> Just keep this up now. Thank you. Yay! <laughs>
I'm the most competitive person I know. Think it's true? Yeah. I want to win this now. That's it. Done. <laughs> 63-year-old Kevin is sure he will impress the judges with his blowtorch-seared tuna. I'm quite confident that I should be able to get on to the next stage of the competition. In fact, I'm hoping to go further than that. He can just make up a meal. I remember we were on holidays one time and all we had was sausages in the fridge and he made three different dishes from sausages. Kevin, if you'd like to come forward and present your dish. Kevin has prepared marinated seared tuna with samphire salad, wasabi creme fraiche with a lomi lomi puree. It was very important for me that you, you pulled this off considering all your effort. I think that um, what you've done here has a balance of texture, flavor, and for me, it's a yes all day long. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. So it's a definite yes for me. Thank you. Okay. Deserve that. Well, well done. done. Well done. Pleasure. You're welcome. See you, See you soon, Kevin. Bye bye. Thanks, Kevin. Bye bye. Thank you. Yes! yes! I was ecstatic. That's the only word. I mean, they were so complimentary. I was embarrassed. But I feel great. <laughs> Kevin is the third through today. With only six aprons left, 34-year-old Claire Ann needs to show real skill. I decided to apply for MasterChef because my sister really, really encouraged me to go through with it. She said, well, look, this is your chance to show people what you can do and not just cook for us at home. Where are you uh, coming from today, Claire? Um, I'm coming up from Cove, but I grew up in Scotland. You've retained the accent. I think it's a difficult accent to lose once you've got it, yeah. What do you do? I'm an assistant on Farmer's Market Stall. Okay. And what are you going to be cooking for us today? Um, I'm cooking a quail, and I'm going to serve with pan-roasted cherries. I don't think cherries and quail are done a lot, but, <laughs> yeah, okay. it's my, hopefully, hopefully a good concept. Thank you, Claire. With an extensive list of ingredients in Claire Anne's dish, she's definitely hoping her experiment pays off. Claire Anne has served quail stuffed with Persian scented rice, with pan roasted cherries and spring onion, star anise flavoured sauce, and a saffron and almond twill. I find that quite weak, the sauce. It's funny, with all these flavours going on, I'm not really picking up anything. It's bizarre. It's actually quite bland. Okay. It's unfortunate. I really want to enjoy it. <laughs> so do I want you to. <laughs> and it's just, it's just no, I apologise, it's just, it's just not coming from my palate. Okay. It's a no from me. Okay. All right? When the door opens and I see her, I hope that she's wearing an apron and that she's got a big smile on her face. There's a huge lack of experience here. I mean, your sauce is so, as Nick says, weak. I mean, I, I don't even want to use it. I, I know by the colour of it. Okay, yeah. The winey flavours, the cherry flavours that should be prominent here to send that dish to a new level. Yeah. It's not there. Right. It's just absolutely not there. However, you do have something. You can cook. I'm going to give you a, a yes. OK. It means that you're going to have to come back. But you do, you do have talent. And you, you can see it in your mind, and I can see what you see. Thank you. So, Th thank OK. Thank you very much. Yes. Hey. I am disappointed. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, really disappointed after the amount of work, but I'm grateful that I get another chance. Yeah, another chance. She's got another chance tomorrow, so. It's day two of the MasterChef auditions. Restaurateur Nick Mounier and Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath are on the search for 16 of Ireland's top amateur chefs. 
So far today, Jackie, Bridine, and Kevin have been successful, leaving only six MasterChef aprons to compete for. Today, cooking for an apron is 34-year-old Polish national Jarek. I love cooking. I got influence from my mom, who used to be a chef and work as a chef all her life. Cooking is my life. I think he'll do well. His dish is really good, and he's been practicing a lot, so I think he'll do well. Where do you get your influences from? My mom um, used to work as a chef for all her life. She's the expert, is she? She's the expert, yeah, exactly. Okay. Phone call to expert, and then she'll just call her, and she's back home, is she? She lives in Poland, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So. Good luck. Yarek has prepared a smoked haddock open ravioli with asparagus velouté and poached quail eggs. You've shown a great skill today. Everything works together beautifully. The asparagus velouté is flavoursome and as a whole the dish does work. That is 100% yes. I think you can really cook. You've shown that here today. Thanks so much. So, yeah. welcome to MasterChef. I'm wondering, did Mummy help you with this? <laughs> so, welcome to the club. Hold on to it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Either of us would be quite happy to pay for that. I would love that. I should go on the Very restaurant good. menu tonight, I think. It's wonderful. When I told my mom that I'm entering MasterChef, she was such a delighted. And she said that she's gonna have fingers crossed all the time. Now she'll be even prouder. 35-year-old archaeologist Jan Marco has chosen to cook a dish from his homeland, spinach and potato gnocchi. I like the thing that I'm living in Ireland, and everybody in Ireland loves Italian food. In Italy, as everybody knows, you breathe food like oxygen in the air, you know. You can't escape. <laughs> John Marco, you have 10 minutes. Okay. I'm going to use a very specific ingredient from Sardinia, which is the botarga, which is dried fish eggs, just to give it a, a different taste. Jan Marco has prepared a spinach and potato gnocchi with langoustine and botarga slices. I love the dried fish egg. I think it adds a, a, an extra flavor of dimension. You were lucky to get away with that. But for me, it's a yes. <laughs> actually, I'm getting the cooking there with the fish there. So I'm preparing the dish, actually. For me, it's a no. You've got to come back and, and prove that you can do it. OK. Didn't excite me. I don't think at the level we're at now. I think the flavour is there. Do you? Yeah, I think the flavour is there. Others fail to inspire the judges. 28-year-old mum Chanel has prepared sea trout with baked rhubarb. It's undercooked. Oh. <laughs> it's a big no for me. 38-year-old Jason from County Cork with his gnocchi with courgettes and lardon and a sage butter. Um, they are quite soggy, yeah, the gnocchi. It's a no for me. Okay. 34-year-old Joanna from Portugal cooked seared tuna with aromatic cauliflower puree and mushroom and leek sauce. It's OK. Whether it's the level that we're expecting, it's not. I'm a no. It's been a long afternoon without a yes. Yeah, but keep the faith. There's somebody good out there. You think so? I hope so. Next up is 38-year-old Dubliner Connell Markey with his sea bass with cauliflower puree. I love to spend time in the kitchen, just um, pottering around. I cook to relax. 
You know, I, I love coming home from work and I love cooking, even if it's something quick and simple, you know. He's been focusing on this for a long time and practicing quite a bit. We're enjoying it. It mightn't look so good in our swimsuits at the end of the summer, but <laughs> we're eating quite a bit of food and really enjoying it. Connell has made a sea bass with cauliflower puree with scallops, leek crisp, almond cream, and leek ash emulsion. What's the black? That's the leek ash emulsion. Leek ash emulsion. Yeah. So that burnt leeks. Burnt leeks. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. It just it doesn't taste of anything. OK. However, you've pulled this off. OK, great. Um, for me, the cauliflower comes through, the almond comes through, so it's a definite yes for me. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you. I think you understand flavours, you've had a good palate, you have made a few mistakes. But I think this is definitely something we're looking for for MasterChef. And it's a definite yes from me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well done. So we'll Thanks. see you again. Looking forward to it. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Are you delighted? Yeah, delighted. They really liked it. With five aprons already gone today and only four remaining, can Keelan from Tala in Dublin convince Nick and Dylan that she deserves one for her three spice scallops with frozen grapes and a grape and mint sauce? Oh, it's cold. Frozen grapes. Frozen. Yeah. Mm. Um. Different dimension to it as well. I actually wasn't sure about this at all. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a chance on you and I'm going to say yes. I was expecting it to be brilliant. For me, it's not that brilliant. So for me, it's a no. Okay. Yeah, you've got a second chance. Okay. So I'd advise you to use it wisely. Getting ready to plate up is 40-year-old Shane from Cork with his smoked eel potato cake with pea chowder. I've been watching the programme for years. I said if it ever came to Ireland, I'd apply for it. It's just a, a great opportunity. Shane has cooked a smoked eel potato cake with pea chowder with crisped eel, pea shoots, dill and chive flowers. Where did you get the flowers from? The flowers are from my garden. It's such a, uh, a tough call. The pea shoots, the flowers, it's all relevant. It all tastes amazing. It's a yes. Thanks very much. Lovely flavours coming through. The only criticism I would say is that it is maybe too soggy for the whole of this sort of chowder thing going on. And I think you have a lot to learn, but I do think that you have shown talent, and I'm going to give you a yes as well. Thanks very much. Which obviously leaves us one thing to do, which is to hand you one of these lovely aprons. Welcome to MasterChef. Thanks very much. Thank you, Shane. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Well done. Oh, need to calm down. It's OK, cool. Tell the right decision, that's it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Next up is 44-year-old wine merchant Dulta from Dublin with his dish of veal sweetbreads with a sherry sauce, barley risotto and garden peas. Uh, I would have preferred the sweetbreads to be more caramelised. It's a shame. I have to give it a no. OK. This is not seasoned enough. If you learn to go back and taste and taste and taste, your instinct will improve. And for that reason, I'm going to give you a yes. Okay. Okay. 
Christine from Waterford is hoping to impress the judges with her classic lemon meringue pie with whipped cream and crystallised candied peel. The meringue is lovely. My concern is repertoire. Having said that, I do like what you produced, so it's a yes from me. Thank you. <laughs> I think you do have a, a talent for pastry. But this is an overall competition. I'm going to say no. What I want from you tomorrow is for you to cook a savoury dish. Okay. 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 It's a maybe, so I just come back. Because I did a dessert, they think I can't cook savoury food. I have to go through it all again now. Hoping to make a real impression with the judges is Ian Mullen from Dublin with his rump of beef and 24 carat consomme. The consomme that I serve on my dish is going to really blow the judges away. It's a 24 carat gold consomme. It just brings the whole dish together and it's just going to blow them away. It must be 24 carats. It must be 24 carats. No carrots on his toilet. a bit robbed Bugs Bunny on the way in. Or he thinks he's in the Wild West. Hi, Ian. How are you doing, guys? And you mentioned uh, a 24 carat consomme, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's consomme that infused with porcini mushrooms, and then to finish, you put 24 carat gold in. And that's really just to kind of get the... Cons 24, the... what, gold leaf? Yeah, I have it here. It kind of creates a little bit of theatre around the dish. I'm going to steal some, is that OK? Uh, I'll have to charge you for it. <laughs> Good, mate. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thank you. I don't doubt for a minute that he's going to get through. I just... No, he has the ability without a doubt, and I just know he can do it. Ian has cooked a peppered rump of beef with a white onion tart tatin, wilted spinach, white onion cream, wild mushrooms, and a 24 carat gold sep consomme. Are you happy with your dish? Extremely. Wow, okay, that's very confident. Okay. Was it necessary to use all that gold? <laughs> Um, I, I think it gives a, a certain uh, a certain flair to it. It's not brilliant, okay? For the simple reason of caramelization in the tatatin is not great. Mm -hmm. The meat is actually quite tough. The spinach is okay. The mushrooms are overcooked. So for me, Ian, it's a no. no doubt that you've displayed a, a real passion for food. Yes, there's elements of this that, that belong together. Um, there's some of it for me personally that is irrelevant. The gold leaf, it does nothing for me. You know, I, I wouldn't pay for that dish. Unfortunately, it's a no from me. Thank Thanks you very you. much. Thanks. Thank you. Gold leaf and the consomme. Yeah, I wouldn't throw that away. Well, I hope the IMF aren't watching this, I so know. they'll be back to renegotiate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really, really upset, but at the same time, it's going to, like, um, scoot up and do it again next year. It's going to make me get stronger and make a better dish for next year. I still think he's amazing. And he's my favourite chef. <laughs> <laughs> he's my master chef, Defo. As day two comes to an end, the second person selected through the John Murray Show is 29-year-old care worker Barry Finnegan. Having travelled from County Louth, will his oven-baked salmon be good enough to take one of the final places? I'm focused for it and I'm driven for it. And if it, maybe I can get through the last 16, I think I would like to think I could go all the way. He's always watched the programmes and sort of read books and he's always kind of imagined, oh, I'd love to do that someday. And then he finally took the jump and here he is now. I know you're very busy, but one question was I'm watching you cook there. Okay, Nick. Because I'm quite mesmerised by what you're doing. 
tell me, why have you never followed a career in food if you're so sort of into it? Someone would gladly take you on as the commie chef in a kitchen. Well, to be honest, yeah, I do kind of regret never following it up because I am passionate about it. I do think I have the drive and I have the focus. If I did go on, it wouldn't be stopping and racing on my laurels. Guys like Dylan, Ross Lewis, all Michelin-starred Irish chefs. I want to train under these guys and be the best I could be. Okay. What do you think? has made salmon with wild mushroom a la grec, roasted asparagus, mint pea puree, and dried tomato skin. Where did you get this dish? It's lots of components from lots of different cookbooks that I kind of brought together. Have you ever worked in a professional kitchen? No. Because you know that this is an amateur competition, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, cool. OK. I'm going to cut into the fish. The fish is cooked perfectly. I definitely think you've got some real talent, and the balance of the dish is all there for me. I love the pickled mushrooms, and I love the mussels underneath, and I love the asparagus because it's in season right now. So for me, it's a yes. Thank you. The salmon is perfectly cooked. It's a beautiful flesh color. PPOA is excellent. You have shown true potential, so I have no choice also to give it a yes. Want to do the pleasures, boss? Yeah. I think you should. Welcome to the team, to the Thank club. You. Don't let us down. I Keep will. that level of consistency. I will. And you deserve that. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Nick. Harry, right, well done. You Thank you. It. Thanks, Well done. <laughs> Words cannot describe how I'm feeling over the moon, absolutely over the moon. They said I cooked it that well, it was like a professional chef, which is pretty mental, like from Dylan McGrath. Oh my god. <laughs> It's the following morning, and with two days of cooking done, the competition has been fierce. With 25,000 euro in prize money at stake, and the honor of becoming Ireland's first master chef, the standard has been high. Yesterday, five amateur cooks failed to win over both judges, and now must cook for them one last time to prove they're good enough to join the other 14 in the competition and be awarded a master chef apron. Food is like music. When I taste lovely, tasty food, I feel well. You know, it's like listening a nice piece of music. I want to go all the way, and I think I can. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, so it's just a fantastic opportunity. I really, really want to do well in this competition, so the pressure is definitely on, but I'm confident I can do it. Something like this is a great experience for me. I like a challenge, and I like stepping up to it. To get the opportunity to be part of the final 16 would be honestly life-changing for me. I would actually really be able to live something that has always been a dream. Good morning. Congratulations. You lot have made it to the second round of the cook-off, so you should be incredibly proud of yourselves. When we both met you all yesterday, we couldn't decide. But we gave you all clear instructions on how to improve your cooking. So this is your final chance to receive the much coveted Master Chef apron. You all have one hour to cook your dish. So you can start now, and good luck. In her audition, Keelan cooked scallops three ways with frozen grapes, but the dish didn't live up to Nick's expectations. Well, I'm here to prove him wrong today and to turn one yes and one no into two yeses. Hi, Keelan. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. Good. Is this dish going to wow us today? 
I hope so. That's the plan anyway, so hopefully it goes so according just, to the plan. just uh, to bake the sea bass? Yeah. And why do you choose that method? That's how I cook it at home and I always like it that way. Good luck. Thanks very much. much. Thanks. Yeah. Jan Marco's dish of gnocchi with fish eggs split the judge's opinion yesterday, but he's very hopeful today. I feel good, to be honest. I really hope I will impress uh, Nick today, and Dylan, of course. Why have you chosen this? Because I love hazelnuts. You love hazelnuts. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts, yeah. <laughs> the way. <it> is. <laughs> okay. That's the way. <laughs> he's very traditional. He's doing something that he's also grown up with. Something that he's dear to, maybe something that he knows. Hey guys, 30 minutes in now, so you've got exactly 30 minutes left. 25 year old Christine impressed with her lemon meringue pie, but the judges were worried about her repertoire. I'm confident in my recipe, so I'm hoping that this dish is good enough and has enough flavour to prove to them that my savoury cooking is just as good as my, um, my sweet cooking. This is something you do at home, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's really, really tasty. There's lots of really kind of strong flavours in there, and I hope it's enough. <laughs> Cheers, Christine. She's trying a savoury dish that she's comfortable with. Mm. It's cookbook stuff. It's yeah. basics. Yeah. 44-year-old Dulta from Dublin presented a dish of veal sweetbreads, but they were not seasoned correctly. I'm, if anything, a little more nervous than yesterday. I'm not entirely convinced that what I'm cooking today is as good as yesterday. I felt yesterday was the was my better dish. And where did you learn this? I cook a lot like this at home, and I like spicy food. Okay. Everybody that we've had is cooking something from home. I just and think it's going to be all the same flavour. If I want to eat something that you cook at home, you get a taxi to their house. OK, guys, you have 10 minutes left. If it's not on the plate, we're not going to taste it. 34-year-old market stall assistant Claire Ann's Persian-scented quail didn't deliver on flavour, but she's hoping her calf's liver is enough to take her through. I'm using Coco Chanel's idea. She always said with fashion, you should take one thing off before you go out, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with my dish. Thought of all the things that I wanted to put in there and then said, right, what's absolutely necessary? Why have you chosen this dish? I want it to be really savoury. Um, again, I've got kind of a sweet, savoury kind of thing going in my dish, so I want this to be really, you know, a savoury. It's not going to be the sauce that holds it together. Okay. It's an extra bit, even though I did say I was trying to simplify it. It's an extra bit that's going to Can't help yourself again. Can't no. help yourself, yeah. No. She's actually impressing me, and I'm intrigued again to see whether they're going to work. I mean, she's quite zany and quite sort of out there. This could easily be it could a go disaster. Wrong. Could go wrong. You are all out of time. Will you please stop cooking? Keelan has made baked sea bass with mange too and spiced rice. Fish is very nice. The rice is very dry. I like the crunch from the beans, but I actually just would eat the fish. But thank you. The rice is um, very stodgy. Mm. Um, I'd say to eat all of that rice in ratio to fish, I'd have to drink a bucket of water. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Jan Marco's dish is Jandua chocolate and ricotta cheese tart with an orange and mascarpone cream. Honestly, it's quite dry. I was expecting something else. Would you serve a glass of sweet wine on the side with this? Yes. Because you need it. It's so dry. <laughs> Ricotta cheese is not really existent. You don't get any of that flavour coming through. But thank you. Thank you. For her dish, Christine has cooked sticky Asian pork salad. The only thing I would say is that I was expecting it to be sort of stickier, yeah. sort of more richer, sort of gooier. You want to be excited by it. Mm. That's all I would say, but thank you. Oh. 
Oh. The pork is very overcooked. With all that Asian, it's five spice. Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot. So it's quite strong. Okay. Yeah. Dulta has made sea bass with laksa noodles and sambal. Hmm. I was expecting it to be very hot. It's actually not that hot. It's quite salty, in fact. Okay. Noodles, curry, chili. I think it needs more sweetness. But ultimately, it's uh, nicely prepared. Thank you. Okay. Claire Ann has cooked salad of pan fried calves liver, chicory, and blood orange with lavender and chili caramel and an essence of Provence herb spray. You're going to spray me or that? Not you. I am going to spray the food. Thank God for that. An essence of Provence. This is. Basil, lavender, orange zest. I'm adding flavour as requested by Nick. It's, it's certainly a very dressed up, humble ingredient. Yeah. It looks like they were actually dressed up. <laughs> the calf's liver is beautifully cooked. Not mad about the chilli. I think it's a step too far. OK. There's definitely flavour coming through. Great. Again, like dinner, I'm not mad about the chili. Right. But it definitely is a taste of Provence. So I fair play. Thank you. Thank you. With no more that can be done, the contestants must now wait it out as Nick and Dylan assess their culinary efforts. I am so disappointed in you. Well, I was expecting so much more of who they are as cooks to come out today, and it didn't happen. Like, this is a crucial part of the competition for them, and I think they let themselves down, and, and I couldn't believe it. What we tasted was awful. There was more talent in the first batch yeah. than there was in the second. I agree. There's only one person in this room that listened to us. Yeah. Where the rest of them are just, just not at the races. We have two aprons, though, Dylan. Who else would you give it to in this kitchen? Well, we're not going to compromise. I'd like to thank you for your dishes today. We have two aprons to give away. However, we strongly believe there aren't two who deserve an apron. Wacky talent <laughs> is a real joy to have in the competition. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you very much. Get out of here. Thank you. Well done, Claire. Thank well done, Claire. <laughs> I'm properly ecstatic at the moment. <laughs> Dylan said that I was a wacky chef. So, um, obviously, the fact that I've maybe slightly um, left of centre ideas about food combining isn't a bad thing, and I'm hopefully going to hold on to that. With one apron still to be awarded, Nick and Dylan are forced to make a call. Nick, Dylan, how are you? Not too bad, how are you? Yes, how are you? Gentlemen, how are you doing? Well, thanks so much for coming back. For his audition dish on day one, Piers cooked a pan-fried fillet of turbot with cockles. It's actually very bland, Piers. Everything joins together quite well. Yeah, I'd give you a yes. In the cook-off, he made herb-crusted rack of lamb, but Piers didn't quite make the grade. Absolutely love the cooking of your lamb. That's exactly how I like to eat it as well. Very much done. It's going to be a tough call. Mm. And the apron goes to... Grant. <laughs> Congratulations. The reason, obviously, why we called you back is because we had two cook-offs. The first cook-off, sadly, we let you go, but the second cook-off didn't reach our expectation. Which has led us back to you. We believe that you have the ability to move forward. 
So on that basis, we'd like to keep you in the competition. So I'm going to give you this. Welcome to Master Chef. Oh, Thank it's you very much. not at all welcome. You deserve it. Don't let us down. <laughs> yeah, don't. Give us a bit of magic now, yeah? I'll certainly try my best. I won't let you guys down. Well done. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks Thank very you, much. Nick. Thank you, Dylan. You deserve that. Bye bye. Thank you. Cheers. Well, he was definitely the last of the 16. He deserves it. I just down to him now. Yeah. Next time on MasterChef. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I really want to stay in this conversation till the end. I need to reach the final for my own sake. I just want to throttle you right now. I think this has been your weakest dish. It's unfortunate we don't have longer.